This video is intended to supplement the written operations manual by visually guiding users through the individual steps to properly program, operate, and maintain the Verizon version of our Jaeger Pro Mine and ICE cameras. Let's start by discussing the camera characteristics and labeling the components. The front view demonstrates the standard antenna, infrared illuminators, ambient light sensor, camera lens, microphone, passive infrared motion detector, and full-length locking latch. The left inside view demonstrates the SD card port, antenna port, 2-inch LCD screen display, selector switch, menu button, OK select button, directional select buttons, playback button, delete button, 6-volt DC power port, and the USB port. The right inside view demonstrates the battery tray with polarity symbols. The bottom outside view shows the DC port plug, 1 quarter by 20 threaded mounting port, and the USB port plug. Begin programming the mine camera for operation by removing the red protective cap and installing the standard antenna onto the antenna jack. Ensure the rubber o-ring is not removed from the antenna jack threads. If the two pieces come out together, remove one from the other and replace the black rubber o-ring. Twist the antenna base snug, but do not over tighten. Unlock the full length locking latch to access the main body. Follow the battery polarity symbols located on the front of the battery tray to properly install 12 batteries. We only recommend Energizer brand AA lithium batteries for the best performance in the field. Alkaline or rechargeable AA batteries will not operate high tech equipment nearly as long. The camera will function in emergency situations using only four AA lithium batteries in the two left columns, two center columns, or the two right columns. We recommend our 6 volt external power supply for extended, long term camera use in the field. AA lithium batteries are still required for initial startup until the camera housing is closed and the 6 volt external power supply cable is inserted into the camera battery port. A formatted SD card must be used for the camera to function. Watch the demonstration as we attempt to operate the camera without an SD card. Move the selector switch from off to setup. The camera will display no SD card, then continue to the home page. You can make changes to the camera settings, but will not be able to take, save, or send photos. The camera supports up to a 32 gigabyte SD card. Ensure the SD card is not locked and insert it into the SD card port. Move the selector switch from off to setup. The screen will display searching network at the bottom center of the screen. It usually takes 20 to 30 seconds for the camera to find the network. Verizon will appear in the top center of the screen after connecting to the network and the signal strength symbol will appear in the top right. Press the menu button to access the program display. There are four main menu tabs, camera, trigger, system, and wireless. Press the left or right buttons to change tabs. Press the up or down buttons to cycle through the submenu settings of the highlighted green tab. Press left, right, or OK to select items with green highlights to edit and view choices. The first item under the camera tab is camera mode. Photo or video may be selected by pressing left or right. The first item under video is video size, 720p, WVGA, QVGA, or 1080p, may be selected by pressing left or right. Video length is the second item under video. Parameters are between 1 and 30 seconds. Press right or left to add or decrease time. 
Sound can be turned on or off. Cycle down to the first item under the Cam tab again and change video to our recommended photo setting by pressing right one click. The first item under photo is photo size. Users may select 3 megapixels, 5 megapixels, or 8 megapixels. This is the size saved on the SD card. The picture sent to the carrier is compressed to 80 kilobytes or less regardless. Press OK to save 5 megapixels. The second item under photo is photo burst. Users may select one photo, two photos, or three photos with a short or long burst. Press OK to save one photo. Selecting two or three will take two or three photos, but only send the last photo of the group taken. Press menu to exit the submenu, then move right one click to the trigger tab. The first item under the trigger tab is sensitivity. Users may select normal, low, off, and high. We recommend normal. The second item is trigger interval. Users may select parameters between 0 seconds and 60 minutes. We recommend a 2 minute trigger interval. A 1-minute selection may not allow a photo to transmit in low signal areas before the next PIR trigger. The third item is time lapse. Users may select parameters between 30 seconds and 8 hours. We recommend it is turned off, which allows the camera to trigger only during PIR events. Selecting on will trigger at the selected interval, sending a photo with each event. The fourth and fifth items are start-stop. Users may select on or off. Selecting on allows the camera to function only between the start and stop times programmed. The start stop settings will override all other general camera settings. Since there are two start stop times available, ensure the program times do not overlap. This feature is most often used to avoid high traffic from non-target species during daylight hours. For this example, we will demonstrate nighttime camera operation from 1800 to 0730 to avoid daytime photos of deer and raccoons at the feeder. The first item under the Start Stop submenu is Start. Cycle up or down to select 18, then move right one click. Cycle up or down to select 00, then move right one click to select the stop time. Cycle up or down to select 07, then move right one click. Cycle up or down to select 30, then move right one click to select the trigger interval. Cycle up or down to select two minutes, then move right one click to select time lapse. Leave this setting off and press OK to save, which returns back to the trigger tab menu. Let's turn this off to complete our setup process. Press menu to exit the submenu, then move right one click to the system tab. The first item under the system tab is the clock. Press OK to enter. Use the up and down buttons to adjust date and time. Use the left and right buttons to cycle between settings. Press OK to save. The second item is the timestamp. Users may select on or off. Selecting on will show the timestamp with the photo. The third item is flash power for the IR illuminators. Users may select low or high. Select high. The fourth item is format, which is used to erase the contents of the entire SD card. The fifth item is overwrite. Users may select on or off. Selecting on will overwrite the first photo in order to save newer photos. We recommend off so we do not overwrite photos and videos on the SD card when full. The sixth item is default which restores the camera back to factory settings. The seventh item is information which displays the camera model, hardware version, firmware version, and MEID number for registration and warranty.
The eighth item is password. Users may select on or off. The default password is six zeros. Use the up and down buttons to adjust numbers and the left and right buttons to cycle between settings. Press OK to save password. Leave this setting off. The ninth item is beep. Users may select on or off. Default is on. Press menu, then move right one click to the wireless tab. The first item under the wireless tab is send mode. Users may select between instant or off. Choose instant to receive photos from your camera. A screen will pop up that says max num. Press the right arrow to access the keypad and change to the desired number from 0 to 999. 0 is infinite or set it to your desired settings. Select save and OK will return you to instant. Use the delete button to delete characters from your screen. Select OK will return you to the previous screen. The second item under the wireless tab is real time. This option must be on for the camera to send and receive commands from the selected recipients. The third item is register camera. Pressing OK will start the registration process. Watch our video setting up your Verizon camera for more details. The fourth item is diagnostic. Press OK to open the diagnostic screen. The user can choose hello test, premium test, and data reboot. Hello test will verify that the camera can talk to the network. Premium test will send a confirmation email to the selected recipient. Data reboot should be used after registration and any time you move your camera to a new location. When conducting a data reboot, make sure you wait for the screen to go away before restarting your camera. Pressing the playback button will bring up the last photo taken. If you have not taken any photos yet, the screen will display no image. Press the playback button again to exit. When photos are present, pressing the left and right arrows will cycle through your photos. Press the playback button again to exit. You must register your camera on JaegerPro.com. Once you receive confirmation, follow the link to JaegerProWireless.com to add your mine or ice camera to the server. Watch our video titled setting up your Verizon camera for detailed instructions. Call or visit us on the web to purchase the latest equipment or learn more about the methods and technology needed to better control feral pig populations in your area. Be sure to visit our YouTube channel to view our entire instructional video series. Once online, keep clicking and like the Jaeger Pro Hall Control Systems Facebook page. If you have a story idea or just want to leave us a comment or suggestion, feel free to send us a message through Facebook or email us at info at yeagerpro.com.